So there was t- two things going on there that I was aware of. Um, one, there was uh, deaf children and youth bowling. There was a lot of kids there. And, um, um, Bob Violet, and Kenny Moore, uh, just to name a couple that I know of, were there, you know, helping coach these children. And then on our side, um, we had the Apple Valley uh, um, Bowling League. Um, and uh, we take up lanes one through 10, I think. Um, unfortunately for for our league specifically um you know we we were near the closest exit of the back of the building so uh when the when the shot was fired the first time i turned around and i I was 30 feet from the suspect and uh i looked and he had his his assault rifle uh kind of pointed down at the ground and he was looking around sort of like in a panic and, and you could tell that maybe he had some sort of a weapon malfunction or something like he needed to clear the chamber or or whatever because um you know if you've ever heard of an assault rifle it's pop 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 not pop 40 seconds later pop um so we had that brief moment and at that point uh i just i was in a really good position where it was me, a handful of tables and, and things, and then there was him at the front counter. So when I saw him looking down at his gun, he was he was facing away from our group. I turned to everybody at the bowling alley on that side, and I said, everybody get out that exit door right now, live shooter. You know, just yelled as loud as I could to get her, and everybody just started running towards that back exit. And, uh, um, you know, with with minor you know scrapes and bruises i think there was you know reports of some people you know getting trampled on or pushed and things of that nature but everybody that was on that side we were able to escape with our lives which um very thankful for uh you know the timing of the whole situation is is unbelievable um on a lot of different accounts uh i was actually bowling against Trish. Um, Trish has been a longtime friend and an employee of mine over at Apple Valley for, well, my whole time there. You know, she's been there for, for eight years. Um, and uh, I was bowling against her. Um, she was kicking my butt, which was great. And then um, uh, I hear a pop as I was reaching for my phone because I was on my way to go to the counter. Right. So 20, 30 seconds later, um, you know, we can all make up all these different scenarios of, of wow, I almost did this, or I was almost there, and the timing, and the da 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 We can go round and round and round. But, um, you know, part of me is, is, is uh, thankful that I was where I was at the time to help and get my mother and my, my crew out of there to safety. But at the same time, I almost wish that I was up closer to him when he came in um, because I, every time I close my eyes, I, I visualize myself uh, attacking him, you know, and and trying to uh, put him into a position where he couldn't fire his weapon. and, And that's all I wanted to do. But in that, 1.5 1.5 seconds when I saw him and it looked like there was a weapon jam. I did wish I was 20 feet closer, but I also looked at it as an opportunity to, to get everyone escaping. And, um, and I went with that, that only, that seemed like the only um, closest thing to guarantee that I could picture at the time. Um going to attack him is not a guarantee, right? It, it could result in an even worse situation. So um, so anyway, we got out. Um, as soon as we got out, I called because I was one of the only few that had a phone, right? Everybody just stopped what they were doing and just ran out. Um, so, I mean, those people without shoes on or one shoe on and no phones, no keys, no nothing. You know, people in T-shirts. I'm in the same t-shirt and shorts I was wearing at the time. 
Um, and we all went out there. I called 911. Um, we kind of broke up into like two groups, sort of. Uh, one handful of us, uh, they went to like Marcos and they found safety at Marcos. And the rest of us, for the most part, ran toward the back, you know, the exit uh, where there's like some signs when you come out. And uh, we were we were there and, and uh, my mother and, and a few others, we were helping this uh, woman, uh, Laura, who who was an older lady in our league. And and she was having a bit of a panic attack, but she also felt like she was trampled, you know, at, at one point uh, trying to get out those exit doors all back. Um, and then I saw a vehicle come around the building and, and at first I was like, well, maybe someone got, got away, you know, maybe someone was able to escape. Or, and then I was like, well, what if it's the shooter? So we were standing on roadside of the signs. And when I saw him coming, I said, everybody get on the other side of the signs, just in case this is the shooter still, you know, and maybe he wants to just whatever. So we, we scurried to the other side of the signs. And sure enough, it happened to be his car. Now, I didn't know at the time. I saw the pictures of this car. Um, I don't know if it was last night or this morning or something. The white um, Subaru Outback. And that was him. And I remember peeking around the side of the sign and looking. And I'm like, I wonder if that's him. So I was trying to really focus on the car and see what it looked like. And I couldn't really read the license plate. Um, but uh, that was totally him. And he, he took off. Um, right after I called 911, I called my girlfriend who was on her way over to come visit us. And, uh, I said, you know, stop where you're at. Don't come to the bowling alley. There's a live shooter going on. And she's like, well, I'm almost there. I says, well, don't come here. So she pulled into subway right, right down the road there and stayed there. And then just minutes later, you know, the cops started showing up and all that. Um, and we all just kind of found our way across the street into this well-lit parking lot area. Um, and we're basically kind of taking head counts at that point, you know, like who's missing, who's here, who's not here. Um, pretty stressful times because without everybody having their phones, you can't really account for everybody because, you know, there's 10 people over at Marco's, there's a person in the ditch over there, you know, another couple already you know, ran off and then they called someone to come pick them up. So, you know, there's people missing. You know? And uh, you know, Trish, uh, Trish was definitely somebody I was looking for and she, she didn't make her way out. Uh, you know, that's uh, sad. I wish I could have done more. <laughs>